Ya. Good afternoon, everyone. Kita ga? Okay. So, dear all participants. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome in uh, the two days online workshop on application of solar power in irrigation organized by uh, Department of uh, Physics, Vinakrao Patil Mahavidyalaya Vajapur, uh, District of Aurangabad, Maharashtra. Uh, this uh, event is organized uh, and funded uh, by uh, UGC strike component uh, first. The funding for this uh, event is about this uh, workshop. Uh, solar energy is most abundant source of energy in the world. Solar is not only answer to today's energy crisis, but also an environmental friendly form of energy. Photovoltaic generation is efficient approach for uh, using uh, solar energy. Solar panels are nowadays extensively used for running, uh, uh, running street lights, powering water heaters to meet domestic loads. The cost of uh, solar panels has been constantly decreasing, which encourages uh, its uses in various sectors. One of the application of this technology is uh, used in irrigation system for uh, farming. Uh, solar power irrigation uh, system can be a suitable alternative for farmers in the uh, present state of uh, energy crisis in India. The solar energy can be used in agriculture in a number of ways, uh, including uh, saving money, reducing pollution. Uh, solar powered irrigation system is application of solar powered water pumping system used in paddy fields, garden uh, for watering the plants, vegetables, and uh, uh, etc. Uh, on this uh, occasion, due to uh, time restriction uh, from our uh, CDC member, uh, Honorable Sri Apasai Patil uh, Krishi Bhushan, uh, has a special message. Uh, just please, audio. Yeah, audio. Yeah. Sure.
आवाज येतो का माझा व्हिडिओ पाहा मी आफ्टर टू दिस मेसेज आफ्टर टू दिस मेसेज आय रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर झिने ए एम प्रिन्सिपॉल विनयराव पाटील महाविद्यालय वैजापूर फॉर वेलकम ऍड्रेस डॉक्टर झिने ए एम सर आय रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर ए एम झिने से फ्यू वर्ड्स अबाउट दिस event Yeah, sir. I think uh, I think uh, there is some technical problem of uh, connections. I think so. गद्य बनू रो गद्य बनू रो गद्य तो बनू हॅलो हा सर येस कंटिन्यू सर ओके या गुड मॉर्निंग आय एम प्रिन्सिपल प्रोफेसर अशोक जिने मराठवाडा शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडळ विनायकराव पाटील महाविद्यालय वैजापूर डिस्ट्रिक्ट औरंगाबाद फिजिक्स डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ दिस कॉलेज हॅज ऑर्गनाइज two day workshop on application of solar power in irrigation under ugc scheme stride component 1 as the principal of the college i welcome eminent resource persons delegates and participants for this two day workshop on application of solar power in irrigation it is my duty as a principal to speak few words about our institution and college marathwada shikshan prasarak mandal is one of the renowned and leading educational institute established in 1960 which is imparting traditional education like kg to pg research and professional education like engineering law pharmacy etc throughout the marathwada region under the 
ablest leadership of honorable mla shri prakash dada solanke as a president and honorable mlc shri satish ji chavan as a general secretary along with their colleagues of executive council and other members marathwada shikshan prasarak mandal vinayaka patil mahavidyalay is established in 1968 and for the last 52 years it is playing a very crucial role in educational cultural social political and economical development of vijayapur tahsil this college is flourished on a beautiful and green 20 acres campus where about 500 students are studying in junior senior college and pg level different courses over 300 dedicated teaching and non teaching staff are working for the excellent performance of this college this college is re accredited by nac bengaluru in the third cycle by a grade with a 3.33 cgpa similarly ugc has given the cpe status to this college and it is iso certified also This college is awarded as the best college award for NSS by the government of Maharashtra and an ideal examination center award is also received from Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar Marathwada University Aurangabad It is noteworthy to state that UGC has sanctioned the stride component one project under the scheme of trans disciplinary research for India's developing economy This is the only college in the jurisdiction of Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar Marathwada University, and one among five in the state of Maharashtra that got this honor. Similarly, NAC Bengaluru has granted the Paramarsh scheme to act as a mentor college for other non-accredited colleges under the jurisdiction of Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar Marathwada University. Aurangabad the nss department of the college is also assigned the responsibility to work under unnat bharat abhiyan for a holistic survey of identified colleges identified villages of the tahsil presently krishibhushan honorable sri appa saheb patil is the head of the college development committee under his able leadership and with the guidance of other members of college development committee the college is marching towards the excellence on the occasion i express my gratitude to professor bg kanere principal art deshmukh and uh, professor mahendra sirsat for their help to get this scheme i appreciate the efforts of the coordinator dr bg lone and the members faculty members of the physics department for organizing two day workshop on application of solar power in irrigation i welcome resource persons who will contribute their valuable thoughts on two day workshop on application of solar power in irrigation i hope that this workshop will be very useful for the participants on application of solar power in irrigation with these few words i conclude my welcome talk and express my thanks to all members who are participating in this two day workshop on application of solar power in irrigation thank you thank you very much yeah thank you sir thank you sir for your few words about our uh, rich institute after that uh, just within a uh, few seconds i will uh, narrate uh, today's uh, resource person dr chandra uh, dr sandeep chattopadhyay uh, brief cv uh, dr sandeep chattopadhyay Uh, completed his doctorate in uh, economics from university of kolkata uh, ms in economics and he has uh, 22 years of uh, 
uh, experience in uh, training, research, and uh, uh, project consultancy in energy economics. Uh, published number of papers in uh, peer-reviewed journals, provided seven research projects, and uh, there is much more than the list of invited uh, talks. So welcome, sir, such uh, uh, excellent uh, resource person we have uh, for uh, this uh, event. And uh, I welcome again and uh, continue your uh, speech. All our participants are uh, uh, waiting. So thank you, sir. Uh, Hello, yes, am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, a very good morning to everybody, all the participants. Special thanks to the principal, Vidaya Prabhu Patil Mahavidyalaya. Yes, thanks. And also, my sincere thanks to Dr. B.G. Lone, who took the trouble uh, for several months to organize this excellent online training program, which is very important, which has a national importance because both agriculture and the energy for to support the agriculture, both are very important for today. This is the national issue. So uh, today we will talk. Today we will talk about uh, the irrigation, how solar energy is supporting the irrigation. Uh, we have divided our uh, speech into a section. Initially, I will, as a student and teacher of economics, energy economics, I will talk about the solar energy, the importance of solar energy in India, as well as how it is important to the irrigation. Then another faculty, Mrs. Madhuchandrika Chattavadhyay will talk about the uh, uh, solar energy technology. And then again tomorrow, we will talk, continue with the designing of solar pump and uh, the technical aspects of uh, solar energy for irrigation and agriculture. And I will talk about the government of India's schemes and supports like Kusum and uh, et cetera. So this is the project about for two days. And now I am starting my speech. Screen sharing is disabled, why? Yes, sir. Please screen. allow the screen sharing. Yeah, screen share allow. Where is allow? Screen share. share. Screen sharing करूँ जाए, just just moments sir, क्या लिखा? अरे ठीक है निकले, just moments sir Stop sharing. Share. More. More money. Put it there. Ah, sir. Hmm. Let's see. Please check it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You continue, sir. Thank you. 
so i am starting my presentation solar energy for irrigation day 1 i am the founder and director of chandradeep solar research institute uh, which is primarily located in kolkata but now i am taking class from telangana state we also have office in telangana so in this program initially at the beginning i will talk about little bit about us and then overview electricity act solar power target in india national tariff policy direct and indirect incentive ongoing scheme program financial <laughs> analysis payback period risk point to remember after what i will come to the solar power for irrigation so i got the chance to meet let Uh, president of india dr apj abdul kalam who had encouraged me to start this institute by leaving the job at the calcutta university he had given the valuable advices how to start an organization and also the professor m s swaminathan honorable father of green revolution he also inspired to me and also the other founder to start this institute in the year 2008 and 2009 basically world needs today an interrupted energy supply for economic prosperity when we were child children and kid or in our college days we used to see power cut in many cities city like kolkata or even delhi they had regularly they used to have the power cut but after 1991 when pv narsa became the prime minister of india we had changed our economic program and economic policy and we had started the open economy policy and invited the foreign investor to come to india for the economic growth that time from that time it became compulsory for the discount distribution company to supply the energy uninterruptedly you cannot stop the supply of the energy if you stop the supply of energy they won't be able to take this class also you sounds are coming doctor loan if better if uh, other people they just mute the voice so india had more than 370 gigawatt of utility base in installed electricity generating capacity it is not that total is coming from solar by march 2020 we had installed 37.4 gigawatt of solar energy that is the statistics given by the ministry of new and renewable resources india is also concerned about protecting the environment and public health and separate department of for the promotion of non conventional energy at the national level was created 37 years ago the present name of the department of ministry of new and renewable energy are related and related office of indian renewable energy development agency solar uh, energy corporation of india mute and all participants are requested to mute uh, your mics all participants are uh, request please mute their mic there is causing the resonance please yeah continue please sir yes so at the top level we have the mnre ministry of new and renewable energy which is supported by some offices of mnre that is indian renewable energy development agency which gives funding for the solar energy projects ireda is like a bank if you want to do any agricultural project with the support of solar energy then even your college that can also go to ireda if the college wants to install a rooftop power plant uh, at the top of the roof or any uh, ground mounted big scale solar power project at the college campus and for that you have to take permission from solar energy corporation of india and before that you have to go to meda i think it is a renewable energy department we have in all states maybe for maharashtra it is meda maharashtra energy development there you can go and get your project cleared in a hassle free mode so it is very you know today has become very easy to get the solar power 
sanctioned. But the journey did not start now only. It was started long time back when we had Dr. Manmohan Singh as our prime minister of this country. And the Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, or today it is called National Solar Mission. It is an initiative of government of India from 2010 and the state governments to promote solar power in India. Inaugurated in January 2010, the JNNSM had been revised twice and now boasts the target of 100 gigawatt. When Dr. Singh was the Prime Minister of India, that time government of India had decided to install 20 gigawatt by 2020. When Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi took the chair, he revised the total target with help of late Sri Orun Jetli that the target should be 100 gigawatt, not 20 gigawatt, and the whole project should be completed by 2022. I hope it will be completed by 2022, but it is a little bit disturbed because of the corona, which destroyed many things in last year. But still, I will appreciate the initiative of Government of India that we had already installed almost 40 gigawatt. And in another this year and next year, by end of 2022, we'll be getting, it may not get, might not get 100 gigawatt, but definitely we'll be getting around 75 to 80 gigawatt in this country, which is huge, very extremely big uh, project. So as on March 2020, the install capacity was 34.627. The revised data came just yesterday only. It is 37,820 37, megawatt. That means 37.8 gigawatt power we are getting from the solar. The prominent states, definitely Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan in the Western Front and the Southern states. While I am sitting that Telangana state, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. These seven states are doing extremely well in terms of installing and generating the power in on-grid and off-grid mode. And we have the huge potential, like 5,000 trillion kilowatt hour. Madam will tell what is kilowatt hour. The total discussion will be, technical discussion will be done by the hour. I will not overstep. So, 5,000 trillion kilowatt hour per year energy is incident over India's land area with most part receiving four to seven kilowatt hour per square meter per day. So in a state like Maharashtra, where you have diverse you know, climate, you can easily tap and use and exploit the solar power just to not only to protect the environment, but also to reduce the electricity cost, which you are giving to the discounts. So the journey of solar power had been started when Atal Bihari Bajpayee was the prime minister of India in 2003, when government of India had formulated the Electricity Act. <coughs> electricity Act entrusts on the appropriate commission the responsibility of promotion of cogeneration and generation based on renewable energy resources. Cogeneration means you get both electricity and heat. And the policy framework of the government of India also stresses on the encouragement of renewable energy sources, keeping in view the need for energy security of the country. I think Dr. Lone is a Renowned physicists can remember the contribution of late President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, and his speeches about the energy security of the country. So the amendment of Electricity Act 2020, which has been done with the active interest of our present Honorable Prime Minister, the central government may, from time to time, after such consultation with the state government, as may be considered necessary, prepare and notify a national renewable energy policy for the promotion of generation of electricity from renewable sources of energy and prescribe a minimum percentage of purchase of electricity from renewable and hydro sources of energy. So allow me to speak two, three minutes on this. Renewable energy means the energy which does not pollute the environment or it is renewed. So not only solar and other renewable areas are there like wind biomass, 
and the hydro source where the capacity of the hydro is up to 25 megawatt they are also considered as renewable energy so the present government of india is telling the all the states they have to take the initiative not only to generate the renewable energy either from solar power or from other sources and they have to purchase it also it is not that you should generate it you generate as well as you advise your discom in west bengal the discom is calcutta state electricity corporation csc or the west bengal state electricity board i think in mumbai it is tata power they are the discom and the maharashtra state electricity board is also there so they should buy that electricity now our target means i talked about the 100 gigawatt target so how it is divided so rooftop solar program is about 40 gigawatt solar park what is solar park solar park is the place that will be located in any state of india union india will be identified by the seki solar energy corporation of india to install megawatt level solar power say from 1 megawatt to any megawatt with at present we have the largest solar power in india that is located in madhya pradesh it is more than 700 megawatt a single power plant the second largest is in tamil nadu it is of 670 megawatt so in maharashtra also many solar parks are there as well as in gujarat there is an initiative of the startup and other enterprises that small startups maybe participants are there i'm watching women are there men are there senior students are there some professors are there so they can start business with solar power with the help of the startup mission of government of india and the 20 gigawatt can be developed by them and the ongoing program which was started on the time of dr manmohan singh that is completed so 20 gigawatt was allotted for that also so this is the break up of 100 gigawatt solar power so now what is national tariff policy in 2011 by the amendment of the national tariff policy 2006 an increase in solar renewable purchase obligation rpo you know if you do not know all these things you cannot utilize solar power for the irrigation also because uh, if you are not known about the benefits of harnessing solar power economically you cannot convince a farmer also to take the solar power for the irrigation purpose so what is renewable purchase obligation every state government they have to buy a little bit of solar power that is generated by any stakeholder whether it is you know binayak rao patil college or sandeep chattopadhyay an individual or any farmer or any society or any company any corporation any municipality whoever are there they can generate solar power if the capacity should be 5 kilowatt and above and a certain percentage of that electricity has to be purchased by the utility so this is the clause there are many clauses in the policy all policies will be a book of say 100 120 pages but this is an important policy <coughs> sorry direct and indirect incentives are there offered by the government of india you can think that suppose i start a program today from where i can get the equity you can get foreign investment today it is not that difficult anyone can develop a project can give to the social media and might attract an investor if you install any solar power project you will get 10 years tax holiday income tax benefits are there concessional custom duty now i will tell one thing that you do not need to bring any any part or any component for the solar project because in solar you need module you need inverter you need module mounting structure and you need balance of system everything is manufactured in india not today it started it's traditionally from 1985 only onward only you can get but inverter we used to bring the inverter used to import the inverter from abroad 
which you do not need to abroad nowadays. But even if you import it from abroad, you get the concessional custom duty and the central financial assistance. It is a capital subsidy on solar PV power project for the system owner. So normal subsidy is 30%. Suppose uh, my friend, Dr. Lone wants to invest in, uh, install a two kilowatt solar power project, you know, grid connected at the top of his room, uh, home. So the normal cost, normal, I'm not telling you the exact cost. The normal price will be 35,000 to 40,000 per kilowatt. So two kilowatt comes around 70 to 80,000. So 30% benefit you will get from the local MEDA, I mean the state government has the renewable energy department. So from local MEDA, you will get the benefit of 30% as subsidy. And it will be given to you by the central financial assistance. And there are some other ongoing schemes and programs. So I will leave this screen with, with you. So you can study them later also properly whoever are interested seriously to go with the solar power. So there are off-grid and decentralized solar application. There are installed of grid connected rooftop solar PV power plant with aggregate 54 megawatt capacity through state node agency for your state as I have been telling repeatedly, your state it is MEDA and installation of grid connected rooftop solar PV power plant, it is 73 megawatt capacity. So there are several schemes which you can avail for the development of solar power, either in your working place or in your office. Now the normal question is, why should I go with solar? Apart from protecting the environment, how economically that benefit us. That is also important for us to know the financial analysis of solar power. The financial analysis says PV module generally have a product life of 25 years. A solar module, whether it is crystalline or monocrystalline or amorphous, different technologies are there, Madam will discuss. So, all the technologies that will last for 25 years, which is why solar PV projects are generally considered to have a 25 year project life. So Central Electricity Regulatory Commission in its renewable energy tariff determination orders also assumes a 25 year useful life in the calculation for solar PV project. Let me give you a simple example. As I said, my friend, Dr. B.G. Lone is interested to install a solar power uh, plant at the top of his home. The capacity is say five kilowatt peak. So five kilowatt peak means the normal generation capacity of one kilowatt peak solar power is five unit per day. Five unit per day. So five kilowatt means 25 unit per day Dr. loan will get. So 25 into 30, 750 unit Dr. loan will get monthly. Then 750 into 12, whatever the number comes, that is, is annual generation capacity. Then Dr. loan has to have a power purchase agreement with the local Reda. Reda means Renewable Energy Department. In the state of Maharashtra, it is MEDA. You have to go to MEDA and have to have a power purchase agreement with them that I have installed a five kilowatt peak solar power rooftop and the generated electricity I wanted to be sold to the grid, inject. I want to inject the electricity into the grid. My generation capacity is this, this is the net metering, this is the data. As the national tariff policy gives them the order to purchase a certain amount of electricity, Dr. Lone can do two things. He can use the electricity and stop paying to the local discom. At the same time, Dr. Lone can get some money from the local uh, the made renewable energy department. So in both way, 
one in terms of saving, one in terms of earning, he can get the money back by 5.5 to 6 years. Whatever the money he had installed for the solar power plant, that he can get back within the period of 5.5 to 6 years. So this is a very simple economics. So what is the life of solar power module? It is 25 years. So suppose I include the rate of interest and other things and the insurance. And even though there is no operation maintenance charge because rain cleans the module for a long period of time in India, still I tell that I consider it the payback period of eight years. 17 years, Dr. Loan will not pay any money to the local discom and he will be getting money from the government. So both way, anyone, anyone, Electricity Act says, individual, corporation, company, college, school, hotel, hospital, anyone can install a solar power plant, PV power plant of five kilowatt peak and above up to megawatt level rooftop. And they can use that electricity as a captive power plant and can give that electricity into the grid. So that provision is there. That is the advantage of having solar PV power plant. See, whole nation is you know, debating with the price hike of the petrol diesel gas. So we need fuel, you know, the external fuel. Human being needs fuel in terms of food and the vehicles need fuel in terms of petroleum. We need the fuel, power plant, the thermal power plant. They need the coal. These are all fuel, primary sources of energy. But if we harness solar power or wind power, so as long as the, you know, the, the component which is converting the primary energy into the secondary energy, like electricity or heat, as long as that is functioning, you do not need to pay any money for the fuel. That is a great savings. That is a great savings that will help one individual to enhance their GDP. And cumulatively, the national GDP will grow. So what are the project life cycle costs that I already told you like a story. Then I come to the next slide. How much you should pay it when you go for the, you know, the budget, you, when you go for installing a solar rooftop power plant, you should pay 45 to, suppose I say one lakh, you know, one lakh is the budget. So 45,000 to 55,000 should go for the PV module. That tells you how important the PV module is for a solar power plant. What is the role of inverter? Inverter converts the DC energy into AC. For that, you should pay 20,000 to 30,000. Module mounting structure that is called as MMS. For that, you should pay 15 to 20 percent of the total project cost. And other balance of system like junction box, cable, meter, for all these things, you should pay five to 10%. I did not include two things, but two other things are there. One is transportation and another is installation. Transportation can be paid directly to the cargo person who will bring the, you know, the components or the materials at the project site. And where, Whatever the component solar power plant needs, they are all very heavy, whether it is inverter and sophisticated, whether it is in inverter or module or mounting structure. And balance of system, these things are small, but very, very, very touchy. So you have to be very careful when you, you know, deliver them. And other part is installation. Now you will get many class 10 pass or 12 pass boys who are very good in electrical you know, wiring and other things, they can easily install the uh, solar power plant if they have the engineering drawing with them under the supervision of a solar energy technologist. Uh, so the normal cost is the 3% of the total project cost they take as for the installation. 
This is the financial analysis. Payback, I already said, the six to eight years is the payback, more or less payback time. And it depends on the location and business model. So as it is five unit from a one kilowatt peak, you get in Telangana, Maharashtra, Karnataka, you know, it's a nice place, Bangalore. So in Kolkata, you will not get more than 3.5 to 4, even in winter only. Summer, you will not get that much of electricity uh, from solar. So it depends. Six to eight hours is the normal time. Eight years is the normal time. But it can be a little bit more and it can be a little bit less also. And India has its own policy regulation for grid connected. I have discussed that is called feeding tariff and net metering. Net metering monitors how much you generated and given into the grid. And there is a rate, there is a tariff. As many as unit you will give to the grid, you will get a fund money from the local state government as per their rule. That is the State Electricity Regulatory Commission. Every project has a risk, small, small risk. So solar has also a little bit risk. That is the technological risk. So any technology that you are considering today as an upcoming technology can be obsolete in after five years like that, not tomorrow, after five years. Solar resource data, there can be you know some mistake in collecting this data like that. Power of tracker, suppose somebody says I take your power, but tomorrow says I don't take your power, not tomorrow, after two years, that risk is there. India is a democratic country, government can be changed at any point of time in any state or central level. So the new government can say I don't take, it has happened in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The previous government had in, uh, installed some wind and solar power project, which are cancelled by the present state government. So developer promoters suddenly they become financially sick because of corona-like situation. Then this is also a risk. Theft and vandalism, that chance is always there and security coverage. So important points to remember means now I will come to the irrigation part slowly, slowly. Whenever you do any kind of solar project, solar power project, wherever it is. Suppose one of your students might go to Africa tomorrow to install a solar power project. So you have to do the feasibility study, whether the project is viable in that location or not. How you will understand that doing the site assessment. Suppose I am thinking, oh, I have a very big roof. I can install a six kilowatt peak solar power project at our roof. But suddenly there is a possibility of a larger home to come up beside my home, which will block the sun ray to fall at my roof. Then what will happen? I will not get any generation. So your site has that kind of possibility or not, you have to understand that. Then assessment of legal and regulatory framework. I told about one term, that is called PPA, Power Purchase Agreement. Sometimes in some states, it is not that easy to get the PPA done. So the legal and regulatory framework, you have to understand very well before you sign any PPA to any agency, government or private agency. Evaluation of financing option, that is, uh, suppose in a small case, small project, you can invest your own money, 80,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 5 lakh, up to 5 lakh. But if it is a larger project, then you need huge money. And this huge money, you need to borrow from other source. So what are the sources are there that you have to understand before you start the project. Then detailed site assessment, PV component, which component you should select, which technology you should select, whether you should select the monocrystalline or polycrystalline or new uh, technologies have come up. Madam will tell about them. So which software you should use to design the PV system, whether it is PVC or Helioscope or SketchUp. So you have to understand that also according to the project. Then from where you will go for the acquisition of the equipment. 
Then obtaining permit, you have to give the electricity to the grid, so you need the permit. Safety, electricity is very risky to handle. That can take life of a human being or pet. So you have to be careful about the safety. System installation, you have to be careful. Testing and commissioning, performance monitoring, cleaning, and schedule and unschedule maintenance. These are the important things to remember when you go for the solar power project. So this is the background, you know, in when Maharashtra is a place which promotes Indian movie, whether it is Hindi movie or Marathi movie. I got the chance to see some Marathi movies also. So if we do not give the background of the story, the public will not understand of what is going to happen in the next hour, in one hour, two hours, what is going to happen. So I have given the background of the solar power in India. I hope it is now clear to you, it is not that difficult to go with the solar power in any part of the country with any size of the project. There are serious people who will seriously help you. If you go to Reda, they will help you. If they don't help you, you write a simple mail to MNRE, they will help you. If any officer is not interested to help you, you don't blame them, you just seek help, either from IREDA or from SEKI or directly from MNRE. In seven days, you will get the reply and you will get the support. So I hope all the participants have understood that they can seriously think to go with the solar power project in coming days, months, years. They can start their own business. They can install a power plant at their home, at their office. Uh, it can be, you know, for their captive use, it can be for their business also. Even a side business for some women entrepreneur also. And good news is that for the women entrepreneur, the rate of interest if they take loan from Ireda is 1% less. If it is a big project, then 1% uh, less will be very much helpful for them. Now, <clears throat> background of Indian irrigation, the core subject. Agriculture, as you know, the backbone of Indian economy, and it is not wrong to say that the irrigation is backbone of agriculture. So irrigation of crops is the most important part in farming and farmers to go different lanes to make sure that their crops are properly irrigated. It is very important for the farmer to be sure about the production of crop. It is not for their earning, it is for us also. If the crop is not produced, there will be a big chaos in India. As if the petrol is not supplied, diesel is not supplied in the power, in the petrol pump for seven days, we can understand what will happen in the country. Like that, if vegetables and other crops, even rice, paddy, they are not supplied in the market on time, we know more serious thing will happen in the country. So what is the background of Indian irrigation? Irrigation is an artificial process. Why? Because the water stays under the ground. We have to lift the water and we have to distribute that water for the agriculture, production of crop. Irrigation helps to grow agriculture crop. Irrigation in India includes a network, major and minor, canals from Indian river, ground water, well, base system, tank, and other rainwater harvesting projects for agricultural activities. Of this groundwater system is the largest. We know that. And you know better than me because you teach that. In 2013-14, only about 36.7 of total agricultural land was reliably irrigated. And remaining 2.3 cultivated land in India is dependent on monsoon. 65% of the irrigation in India is from the groundwater. So all the areas in India do not get the same rain. Once I was coming to this Telangana by Rajdani Express from Delhi. So the attendants of my coach, they said when the train came here to Jhasi that for many years, this place did not get rain for two, three years. And it was not possible to stand near to the door. From Jhasi to Nagpur, I found that situation. 
But if you come to Kolkata in July, you will pray to God, God, please stop the rain. I am unable to go out for my work. So monsoon is there in India, in Kerala, monsoon is there in Bengal, Assam, monsoon is there, extra monsoon is there. But in many places in India, they just cry, cry for the rain. So the, they are, but agriculture is there everywhere in the country. So they depend on the groundwater. We have to lift the water. There the role of solar pump comes. Currently about 51% of agricultural area cultivating food grains is covered by irrigation. The rest of the area is dependent on rainfall, which is most of times unreliable, unpredictable, as I say. Importance of agricultural sector, we do not need to tell that, but still for the sake of this presentation, I should say the agriculture sector employs nearly half of the workforce in the country. Some people, you know, some people still in the fancy that all the agricultural fields will be converted into industry. Then Professor Emma Swaminathan had said very nicely, you can prepare the gun, you know, you can import the gun, but not the food. You can import the gun, but not the food. Food cannot be imported for 130 crore people, 1.3 billion people. You cannot depend on the import. However, it contributes 7.5 percent of the GDP at current prices of 1560. India's production of food grains has been increasingly every day. India is among top producer of several crops also. And in, in terms of highest producer of milk, second highest producer of fruit and vegetable. In 13, 2013, the India contributed 25 percent of world's pulses production, the highest for any country 22% rice production and 13% to the wheat production. It also accounted for about 25% of the total quantity of cotton produced, besides being the second highest exporter of cotton for the past several years. I should be thankful to Dr. Lohn. I did not know all this data. I have come to know, I have become educated about this fact and figures while preparing the data for you. So, Agriculture and GDP in India, the share of agriculture in GDP in 19.9% .9 in 2020-21 from 17.8% 1920. So it is very uh, nice to see that GDP contribution is increasing in India. So the maximum GDP 20% we found in 2003-04, again in 2021, we have seen the growth of 19.9%. Now the water scarcity and agriculture in India. GDP is growing, our crop production is growing, but at the cost of very high labor that the, you know, the farmers or the workforce, they put on the field. Even in 50 degree temperature, they work on the field. I am sitting in AC room and giving lecture. And many people are, who are listening this lecture, maybe they are also in AC room, but the farmer, they are now in, now it is not 50 degree, but in some places it is 40 degree. They are working in the field and producing the crop for us, but they need the water for that. Water scarcity has a huge impact on food production. Without water, do, people do not have a means of watering their crop and therefore to provide food for the fast growing population. So what could be the solution, 5HP, solar water pump could be the solution. How a solar water pump works? A solar water pump system is commonly seen in residential and commercial use. I have taken almost 40 minutes time to tell about the residential and commercial uses of solar pump, solar, solar power plant. Then what about the solar pump? Pump is also seen in the residential and commercial use as well as for irrigation of agricultural land. How the system operate, Madam will definitely tell that, but I say a little bit of that. The system operates on power generated using solar PV module of any technology. The photovoltaic array converts the solar energy into electricity, which is used for running the motor pump set. The pumping system draws water from the open well, bore well, 
stream, pond, canal, etc. The system requires a shadow free area, as I said, that the site assessment is compulsory, but that is for the power plant, but not for the water pump, because in the ground, it not on the ground, you will don't have the fear of having the shadow. So shadow free area for installation of solar panel. Parts, you know, how many, you know, if, as I said, for the solar power plant, it is module, inverter, mounting structure, balance of system. So for the pumping system, solar PV panel, one of the following motor pump sets compatible with the photovoltaic array, whether it is surface mounting centrifugal pump, floating pump, submersible pump, and also we need pipes. Advantages, low fuel cost. I say 25 years, low fuel cost. Whatever the cost of coal or petrol, diesel go up, you don't care because you have already paid at a time. And Sun will not charge any money to give you the abundant radiation. No electricity required, long operation life, highly reliable and durable, easy to operate and maintain, eco-friendly. Top five solar pump companies of India, Shakti Pump of Madhya Pradesh, which was you know, incorporated in 1982, Dubi Solar of Gujarat, 1965, Falcon Pump of Gujarat, 1994, Aquatic Solar Pump of Coimbatore, 1956, Wari Solar Pump of Maharashtra, Mumbai, incorporated in 1989, approximate cost. 2 HP, so total head suction and delivery. So solar photovoltaic model capacity, 1800, cost 2,90,000. 4.6 HP submersible pump, 30, and solar PV is the capacity of the uh, module. 4,800 watt and cost is around 7 lakh 15,000. Performance, switch on. The performance of solar power water pump was as equal as pump powered by the conventional one. The efficiency of solar based water pump is much higher than conventional based water pump. The maximum flow rate obtained was 69 LPM against 65 LPM for conventional power method. So I will close now, but this is not the end of our session. So uh, after me, Madam will talk about the solar uh, technology, the, how the pump technology is there. So if anybody has any questions, I am ready to take them and definitely I will try to address their, to their doubts. <laughs> Yeah, participants are uh, welcome uh, to ask the questions. If you have any doubts, you can ask uh, your questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask friendly. Or they can also ask the question after Madam takes the class. Yeah, also just you can uh, put your uh, question in the chat box also. There is no problem. Yeah. So I will now introduce uh, Madam Madhuchan Rika Chattopadhyay, the co-founder of this institute and very expert in handling all the subjects of renewable energy like solar, wind, biomass, but uh, extremely very expert in solar photovoltaic. So she will now describe with the help of some slides yeah. about the technological part of solar power. Yeah, welcome ma'am. Yeah, all participants request uh, put their uh, questions. If you have any question, we can uh, put in chat box. Thank you. 
Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I thank Vinayaka Rao Patel Mahavidyalaya for giving me the opportunity to speak on solar energy. So, uh, may I, sir, may I know the background of the students so that I can explain accordingly? Ma'am, there is no problem. No, are they from engineering background uh, or science? Uh, science, engineering, faculty, uh, some, yeah, some from villages also. There is diversity, not uh, particular students there. Okay. Okay. The, and for uh, maximum from all states also as well. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunate yeah. thing is that I cannot speak Hindi, so I have to speak. There is no, no problem, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Welcome and we continue. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, today I will introduce the actually technology of solar power plant, solar systems, actually. So in, before knowing the technology, what the modules are, are already in the market, if you don't, if you're not aware of these technologies, you cannot install a in solar water pump or solar power plant or solar, even a small solar lantern also. First, you should have the knowledge of technology before going for any application part. So we have many applications in case of solar, whether it is thermal or electricity, but in both cases, you should know the technology and their function. Then only you can deal or install it or design it properly. So today I will give the introduction of the technology. Actually, what, what is solar and many, what are the technologies available in the market? Okay. When you go to buy any solar module for your solar water pump from any vendor, he, will, he may show you two, three types of modules and maybe more than that because Three new technologies are in, uh, introduced in India last year. Hello. So at least you should have the idea yes, that which technology you have to buy and which module you have. Yes, so today I'll give you the knowledge of that. First, we go to the advantages. Bar, advantages bar. are known to everybody that it is okay, renewable okay, energy, okay. everlasting, all these things are known. Yes, so yes, yes. Low okay. emissions and uh, it is a very large source of energy and the power from sun we can intercept at 1.8 into 10 to the power of 11 megawatt, which is thousand times larger than our current power consumption from all sources. So one day sunlight in any desert is sufficient to give the electricity to whole world for 365 days. So this much power the sun has. So why don't we use it as a fuel? So fourth point is solar energy is available to all at fairly equal manner, which provides a chance that an individual can generate his or her own energy. So even though in renewable energies, uh, we have not only solar, we have wind, we have biomass and tidal, ocean, so many geothermal, all this comes under renewable. But still we are too much fascinated and interested to know only solar. Why? Yeah, right. Why? Why, sh why we should not go for a wind power plant or why we should not, why our solar, why we should call it a solar water pump, not a wind water pump. Right. So why the uh, solar has this much popularity than compared to your wind technology or biomass technology. So what makes the solar energy special? Still every college or every university wants the seminars and conferences and only on solar. Because the demand is there for that. So the answer is the last point. That is a modular character of technology allows gradual implementation and easier to finance. So this is uh, one single point which makes solar special and a unique difference with other renewable energy technologies. So what this point mean, the modular character of the technology, right? Suppose, for example, the requirement of my home is two kilowatt, means I consume two kilowatt. So now I want to turn that two kilowatt uh, from conventional electricity to solar electricity. I want the supply from solar electricity. So two kilowatt solar power plant cost around 80,000. So we may not have initially 80,000 to invest at a time. So in that case, I can divide the plant into four parts or I can divide the plant into two parts as per my finance. If I can invest 40,000, so I will go for one kilowatt first, then maybe after six months or after one, 
uh, one year, I may add another one kilowatt for the uh, already existing plant. So as per your requirement, you can customize the product in case of solar. So for that reason, this technology has become more popular. So a villager also can come to city, take a module to his home and connect it just to run lights and fans like that. But in case of why it is not possible with wind, because wind turbine, I think you all have seen the wind turbine, not practically, maybe in movies. Nowadays we see in the movies, wind turbines, very big wind turbines. So if the consumption of my home is two kilowatt, I don't find two kilowatt wind turbine in market. Wind turbine rating starts from one megawatt. So one wind turbine is one megawatt. So installing such a huge wind turbine in the middle of the city is not possible for us. So again, the wind turbines are always installed in the coastal areas <coughs> because a availability of air wind is possible there. In the middle of city, you don't get air. So you cannot customize other renewable energy technologies as you customize your solar. If you need solar 100, you can install 100 watt. If you want 500, you can under, as per your finance, you can customize. But in case of wind, what is available that you have to take? You cannot customize the product. In case of biomass, first I have to collect the tons and tons of waste, whether it is kitchen waste or other waste or agriculture waste, any waste. I need tons and tons of waste. And when I make and, and when I dry it, it comes to 100 tons, comes to around 30 tons. So 70 tons is lost in the moisture content. So again, from that 30 tons generation of units may be very less. So for this reason, everybody are going on why the solar, pop, solar has become popular. So this is the reason. And this is the main advantages. Where everlasting renewable energy, no emissions, no combustions uh, and availability, these all are applicable to other renewable energy technologies also, wind and bus. But the last point, modular character of the technology is not applicable to other renewable energy technologies. It is applicable only for solar photovoltaic and solar thermal. Okay, next. So a simple description of how the solar cell functions. So solar cell, solar module, solar array, strings, this term terminology is totally different. When you install a solar power plant, I'm not talking about a small plants like two kilowatt, five kilowatt. When you're going for the megawatt power plants, and if you are a design engineer of that, you should be aware of these terms. So I'm not talking about module, I'm talking about cell. Cell is a one cell that is present in the module. So series of cells is nothing but solar module. So the function of one cell is, this is a one solar cell. We also call it as photovoltaic cell. So this converts photon means sunlight into electricity. So the more sunlight, the more electricity, the more current is generated. So the maximum generation from the solar cell is in the between 12 to one o'clock noon, right? So when I install a solar water pump, I should know the radiation data of that particular location. If I'm going to install in any northeastern part where it is mostly cloudy and temperature is not above 30 degrees, in that case, installing a solar water pump becomes difficult. Ultimately, you need water for the irrigation. So if the radiation is not proper and the sun intensity is not enough to lift the water, then it becomes difficult. So whenever you go for any solar installation, whether it is water, whether it is solar water pump or solar power plant, you should know the climatic parameters of that location, like what is the radiation of that location, what is the wind speed, and what is the humidity. Now, from last two years, we are also taking into account pollution level of the location. Two years ago, we did not consider pollution as a main parameter in designing the power plant. But now we also consider pollution level in the uh, designing of the plant or water pump because we have to install the solar uh, module there. If the pollution is very high and it is deposited on the glass, then there is no generation of electricity. So we maybe most of the people have seen some street lights, solar street lights are installed um, in the main cities. 
but nobody is there to clean and it is totally dusted and the light is not blowing. It's the only reason the pollution is deposited on the glass. So the climatic parameters are most important before installing any solar application. If you are going for solar thermal, like water heaters, then you have to check the water quality of that location. So these things are needed. So this is a solar cell, a small solar cell. Light falls on the cell and both current and voltage is produced. So this is a solar cell. So now the technology is present in the market. These are not uh, research level technology They're already in the market for last 60 years. So these are solar cell, top portions are solar cells, single cells, and all the cells are connected in series, we call it as module. So these two types, if you find a module where the cell is either in round shape, or octagon shape, we call it as monocrystalline solar module. And if the solar cell is in the square or rectangle shape, we call it as polycrystalline or multicrystalline solar module. Next, if it uh, if you see the cell in a light chocolate brownish color and uh, totally one cell, you can see this is totally one cell. This model has only single cell. This we call it as thin film. Some people say this is Chinese model. No such model is there. This is a, another technology of solar. We don't use the last thin film model because efficiency is very less. So gen if efficiency is less, then generation falls. So most of the times, whenever you deal with the solar power plants or solar water heaters, or, no, what not water heater, solar water pumps, you, you will find either you, they are using polycrystalline model like this, which is in square or rectangle shape, or monocrystalline model where the cells are in round shape or octagon shape. So when you buy, you have to see which module you are buying, or else uh, you cannot blindly bring it and put it on and uh, Think that it starts working. No, you should buy it properly. And which technology you are buying? That is, monocrystalline has high efficiency. Till now, for the current situation in the world, monocrystalline is has high efficiency. So high efficiency means cost is also high. So now most of the power plants in the world or in India are done by this ball polycrystalline, also called as multicrystalline. Some companies mention polycrystalline, some companies mention multicrystalline. So remember the sizes, then you knowing the technology is easy. So the many more solar model technologies are present, but right at the now at the research level and just introduced last year. But these three technologies are already already present for last 60 years, and all the solar power plants are made with either mono or poly. So which one will be suitable for your solar water pump? That depends on you. You have to survey and uh, take the data. Next. So this shows solar potential of India. So published by your National Institute of Solar Energy, MNRE, Government of India. So they published which region will give how much capacity of the power plant. Like you can see Jharkhand or Eastern part of West Bengal, six megawatt, even Gujarat, Maharashtra, you can see from here the megawatt generation. Actually, even though our target is 100 gigawatt uh, by Prime, Honorable Prime Minister, but India has the potential to generate 748 gigawatt solar electricity. So which region can produce how much, you can find out from this map. So highest is in 142, and next is 111, Jammu Kashmir. So you can find out, and the, the orange color, light green color, and red color, these colors indicate the radiation, the sunlight intensity. The sunlight intensity is much better in western part of India, then northern part, and then southern part, and very low in eastern and northeastern part of India. So before any investor going for the uh, large plants like solar power plants or water heaters, they go through this radiation data and find that which location has the highest data. Or as just installing solar power plant and uh, water uh, solar water pump, 
by investing so much amount and later on you will find that radiation is very low in that location so generation or liters or water is not coming out and that becomes a problem so before going for any implementation of any solar application whether it is photovoltaic or thermal you should uh, have a properly survey the uh, region like with the climatic parameters and go for water testing and soil testing so water testing and soil testing you have to check it manually you should bring the soil or you should bring the water from that location and check it uh, if you are going for the big solar power plants like megawatt gigawatt now we have three different softwares we use the software take your address feed your address and your whole roof your location your everything is shown and as per that we design the solar power plant so next comes the phasing of solar model i think you people also observe that all most not most all the solar modules are not installed horizontally they are installed at a particular angle the solar modules are installed at a particular angle facing towards one direction so if you even if you buy a very better good quality solar module from vari or tata or any other company any very big company you bought a very good quality solar model but the what the mistake you have done you did not face the model properly and you did not view the angle properly so even though you buy good quality you cannot just bring it and put it on the roof no it's not like that as india falls in the northern northern hemisphere all the solar modules in this country should face south direction so when you install the solar module with your uh, what is it what is it compass with with your compass you should check which is the south direction and face your module according to the that so all the solar models whether it is in uh, anywhere in india whether it is from maharashtra gujarat ja kashmir or karnataka wherever it is in india all the modules should face south direction so if you make the mistake of that the generation falls because we say south direction because as a sun moves from east to west direction it moves through south direction so most of the sunlight falls on the solar model the more sunlight falls on the solar model the more generation it happens and the maximum generation happens in the solar noon solar noon of india is 12 to 1 o'clock so it's not like our coal power plant we know in case of coal power plant 24 hours we get 230 volt whenever you check whether in the middle of the night or morning or afternoon whenever you check it gives you 230 volt in conventional electricity but in case of solar uh, module if i'm in, if i'm installing a 100 watt module in the field that doesn't mean from morning 6 o'clock when the sun rises to sun sets in the evening 6 o'clock for la- for 12 hours it will give only 100 watt continuously no so it will not give like that it may give in the morning 7 o'clock 20 watt only 100 watt module can give 20 watt only and in the evening it can give zero so when the sunlight increases the radiation when the, the generation increases so the maximum generation happens in the solar noon that is in the afternoon 12 to 1 if there is no cloud no rain shadow free area so all the solar modules by default should be installed in the shadow free area okay shadow free shadow effect is a larger effect and larger problem in every power plant even though we install in the shadow free area sometimes what happens a leaf has flown and uh, stalled on the one cell then it gives it it that gives a huge problem to the module so just install install not like that you have to go for the shadow free and you have to check no other tree grows in next 6 months or one year if the shadow falls if the shadow falls on the whole solar module not a problem but if shadow falls on the half of the module and half of the module is active then the damage happens so all the solar modules whether you are going for bigger solar power plants like 700 megawatt or 800 megawatt or a small solar water pump all the modules should face south direction okay. so if a, if the country falls in the southern hemisphere they install in the north north facing 
as we are in the northern hemisphere all the solar module should be installed facing to towards your south next tilt of the angle so now facing of the solar module is completed now how it is tilted you i think you all have observed the module is never horizontal to the ground the module is always tilted to some angle so what is that angle so angle is that angle we call it as tilt angle and sometimes we call it as inclination angle it is as it is inclined we call it as inclination angle so this tilt angle is equal to the latitude of the location suppose aurangabad la graphic graphical latitude every location has latitude and longitude so we consider latitude only for solar so aurangabad has latitude of 19.87 so your tilt angle means the angle of the solar module to the horizontal should be around 19.87 or in round figure i can take 20 degree so that 20 degree angle you have to measure it using the inclinometer uh, equipment we have one inclinometer so with that we take the measurement so if i'm installing the same module in hyderabad i should tilt means i should raise the module to an angle of 17.38 maybe an approximately 18 if you do not make this facing and uh, tilt angle properly even though you buy the better quality model the generation falls so these two are most important factors while installing a solar module so solar module you will be using for solar water pump also so there also if you make mistake in the tilt angle and the facing then the uh, uh, water amount of water should be flown per day will be less just simple reason that you have made the mistake in facing and angle instead of going for 20 you have gone for 25 or 30 then the radiation reduces and the your water upliftment also reduces so before installing where you are installing and the latitude of that location is most important so for delhi we take it around 28.7 or round figure we can take it as 29 so like this every location every city has latitude and longitude and the tilt depends on the equal to the graphical latitude of the location so these two things are major important things while installing even a small 10 watt even a bigger 400 watt whatever you install these two parameters are most important so as i said we have different uh, terminology single cell um, are converted into module when many cells many solar cells are connected in series always they are connected in series we call that it as module and if many modules are connected in series we call it as string so if modules are connected in series we call it as string if modules are connected in series and also in parallel see you can see these two are connected in series these two are connected in series these two are connected in series and string 1 string 2 string 3 and string 4 and the four strings are connected in parallel you can see all the positive one side all the so we call it as array even though we have ready made software to help us in designing and i uh, and uh, uh, how many modules we should be install everything your software tells everything whether it helioscope even designs how in your roof also so but what is important here is software will not teach you what is the array what is string it only shows that 19 strings so if you don't understand what is string so you don't know what is written in the software 19 strings means 19 string each string has all the modules in that string are connected in series not in parallel if they say we also have monitoring system in every power plant or in bigger solar water pumps like scada even coal power plants has also has this scada system scada monitors the power plant if it shows in the scada array array 1 has array 1 third string has fault you should at least understand what it does mean what is array which one you should check if i'm going for 2 megawatt 3 megawatt 5 megawatt power plant we will be using around 20 3 to 4 to 5000 modules so when the monitor says that array 1 string 4 has problem then you should understand what does that mean where you have to check the array and where you have to check this in same case in solar water pump also we may not go for single 
module, we may go for combination of modules. Maybe four modules are connected in series. Means we call it a string. Our two two are connected in series, and the two combinations are connected in parallel. We call it as array. So terminology is most. Even though our things are made easy with softwares, but software will not teach you the definitions. If it if it says till tangle, you have to enter till tangle. The number should be entered by you. But if you don't know what is till tangle, then you cannot enter anything in that column. So if you enter, it will calculate and give you the total plan design. Okay, so this is a cell sign model. So just tell me if I am okay and people are understanding. Are any queries still here? Yeah, participants have any doubts? They can ask. Um, I think there is no doubt. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you can uh, continue, and after the end of this uh, session, they can ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so why we should go for solar, not for conventional? We are going for solar water pump, and in, in in these two days, we'll be discussing about solar water pump. But why is it true that because of hype? And all these things, we should go for solar. Are really solar has any benefits come compared to the utility grid? Utility grid means the electricity which you are using at your home. Okay, that is that we from coal you are using. So we call it as conventional utility grid. So why you should go for solar? So one major advantage I said is that modular character of the technology. Like you can customize your product in case of solar PV. So we see the little slight differences here. So one is, first one is input fuel, solar energy is site dependent and statistical in nature. So solar energy is site dependent. The radiation which is falling in your college is not same. The radiation which is falling in Hyderabad. So, so if the radiation falling in Aurangabad is high, then generation will be high. But if the radiation falling in Hyderabad is low, then generation will be low. So it is site dependent. Dependent, dependent on the radiation. But in case of coal power plant, supply of input fuels are dependent on external. Here, we have to import coal or we have to take the coal from one state to another state. That I need this much tons. So it is not any nature dependent. Second point, energy generation influenced by local site parameters. As I said, in calculating a solar power plant using the software, we include not only the radiation data, we include wind, in humidity, and turbidity. Turbidity means pollution level also. So in considering all these factors, we design the solar power plant. So next is uh, the in case of conventional energy generation influenced by fuel input, not local. Energy. So in coal power plant, it is not dependent on the local conditions, no local climatic parameters. This much tan fuel I'm giving as input and this many units I will get. This is a coal power plant. Next one is load and site specific design. In case of solar, it is load and site specific. Load means, as I said, if my load is two kilowatt, I will install two kilowatt. If your college load is 100 kilowatt, you will be installing 100 kilowatt. As per your requirement, you can customize it. Load and site specific design. But in case of conventional, capacity specific design does not depend much on site or load. It is a capacity. Whether you want 650 megawatt or 1000 megawatt, that is up to you. It doesn't depend upon the, any site or load. Additional energy storage facilities must be provided for content. So in case of solar, you need battery. So in not in all cases, not in grid connector, but in off-grid applications. Off-grid means... Yeah, I like to do that. Yeah, I like to do that. Yeah, continue, continue, ma'am. Okay, okay. So After five, in five, case of five solar, minutes, we have to con uh, ask the sessions. Okay. okay. So, in case of solar, we need a battery system because 
if you are, you cannot use directly from solar to your load because as i said radiation changes every second uh, if i if the radiation changes from 700 to 800 or 800 to 500 then if you directly connect it to the load the load will be, load means what your lighter fan in that case your fan will be on and off your light will be on and off because it is not continuous like coal power plant so in that case you have to store the total uh, solar electricity in the battery and from battery we can run our appliances or load at home but in case of conventional we do you do not in case of coal power plant you do not need the battery because electric the, in the grid the electricity is present for 24 hours you can use any time basically dc electricity so solar pv is always dc electricity okay never ac you have to convert it into ac using the inverter so basically dc electricity voltage dependent on the system so there is no fixed voltages with the solar we can go for 12 we can go for 24 we can go for 42 as per the design when we do the design but in case of coal power plant international standards like 220 volts 50 hertz for india so this is standard they don't change variable voltage and current depending on the time of the day unless energy control and storage are used so this point means, as I said, if even though I install 100 watt solar module on the roof of my home, but 100 watt is not continuous for six hours or 12 hours. It changes, it, every second is changes, current changes, voltage changes, all these things happens in case of solar. But in case of conventional, steady voltage, whenever you measure with the screwdriver uh, tester, it will give you the 230 volt. Milliwatts to megawatt capacity vision. As I said, you can customize your product. A small plant with 100 kilowatt, a bigger power plant with 700 megawatt is uh, possible. But in case of coal, only high capacities are available. They always you know, they don't go uh, below 650 megawatt coal power plant. Always it is above 650 megawatt. Maybe used both as a centralized as a distance. This is a very big advantage of solar because. You no need to make a, such a big power plant and install somewhere and from there you need to bring the electricity to home. It's not required that we can use in a decentralized way. We have done a project in the rural areas, wherever we there is a student who, and so when any home having the student, we installed a solar off-grid plant, off-grid small system on the roof of their homes. They themselves can generate, I mean, decentralized, means one plant on, on your home, on my home, or as per your requirement, you can decentralize it. It's not like a coal power plant. I will install somewhere near the river or lake, and from there I will pull the grids and give it to the home. No, if you if you have requirement, you can use it. If your neighbor has requirement, you he can use it. It's not like that. Whole thing should be installed in one place. From there we will bring the electricity. Not required in case of solar. In case of conventional, it is only centralized unit. One. On one place, coal power plant is installed. From there, we bring the transmission and distribution network. Solar PV, very less maintenance works. Only cleaning is required once it is installed. That is also once in a month. Or if it, if it rains, 20 millimeter rainfall happens, and automatically all the modules are cleaned. But in case of coal power plant, continuous attendance is required. Because fuel is completing, again, you have to input the fuel. And many as there is moving parts, more moving parts means more maintenance is required. In case of solar PV, no moving part is present. Very little running operational costs, substantial running or operational costs. So repairing and all these things are there in coal power plant. But in case of solar, nothing, nothing that happens. So last one is environment friendly and huge pollution from the coal power plant. So this is a major advan advantages why we should go for solar PV, solar power plant or solar water pump or solar applications, why we should go for that. So in any application, we use the solar module. So first, we should be aware of the solar module technologies present in the market. So now comes to the systems. So we have discussed only the modules. We have discussed about the now uh, solar modules. So now where we will be using that modules? What are the applications? 
so solar modules can be used our pv systems can be we call it a pv because we also call it as photovoltaic photovoltaic is a technology term or simply you can call it as solar module so solar module systems we use in four different applications one is stand alone we also call it as off grid stand alone means not connected to grid totally used for your your purpose whether it is your home or college or hotel whatever for your purpose you are not feeding anything to the grid so in stand alone systems we have without bat without storage means without battery and with battery so any stand alone system any off grid system there is no application that it has no battery because off grid means you are storing the charge in the battery but they are saying there is one application where it is not connected to grid but it it also doesn't have the battery that is also standard that is solar water pump even though solar water pump is not connected to grid we don't use batteries that that is a totally different system works there but it is off grid solar water pump off grid means not connected to grid only one application of off grid which doesn't have battery that is solar water pump and then we have many other applications like pv hybrid we mix pv uh, so solar and wind solar and micro hydro solar and diesel like some resorts in the corner of the city some resorts will be there like we have in uh, near bay bengal sea we have resorts but the electricity is not present in that case what they do whole morning they run with solar in the night they run with diesel so this combination is used we call it as pv hybrid next one is grid interactive grid interactive also called as on grid on grid solar means any power plant connected to grid whatever you generate you have to feed it to the grid so in grid interactive rooftop and central now the whole market is in this two application rooftop solar power plant and central solar power plant so there was a market for you there was a huge market for stand alone but last 5 years government is focusing on rooftop and central solar power plants so these are on grid if you have land and if you have finance you install and you feed it to the grid so how that happens in, in case of rooftop as we have seen in bangalore 10 years ago since last 10 years ago so we have seen that uh, individual homes if they have the roof terrace they are installing around 10 kilowatt or 15 kilowatt or 20 kilowatt, as per the roof area they are installing it they are consuming what is available and their extra they are feeding it to the grid so that time the uh, there was a pay revenue generation from that that time the per unit solar electricity unit was around 9 rupees so if a person generates around 400 units per month so 400 into 9 you can calculate so 3600 he could earn but now that process is not there now what is happening they are, if you are generating excess then that plus is added to the local discount like that plus plus you are adding and you are not paying your electricity bill anything because you are in the surplus you are generating high so this is rooftop and central solar power as we are not discussing on this area grid interactive we don't go in deep of this we will be here only without storage stand alone system without battery that is solar water pump so this is a off grid stand alone solar pv power plant applications it has with battery and without battery all the applications are with battery only one application without battery is water pump we may call it as stand alone because not connected to grid but in case of with battery many more applications are there from your small solar lantern to rural application to refrigeration telecom tower so many so many applications are there with battery but without battery only one application is there that is solar water pump this is also same this is also this map also shows where the radiation is high so whoever install any application whether it is solar water heater solar water pump or solar big solar power plants first we go through the radiation data of india you can see where in which places the radiation is weak and in which places it is very high so the investor when he puts money he will see the radiation that where if i install 
in this location when will be the return on investment if you are installing in uh, northeastern part you the return on investment may be 10 to 15 years but if you are installing in the western part the return on investment may be in 5 to 6 years so this is how the investor or whoever maybe me also here as a customer if i want to install on my home in calcutta you can see the radiation of calcutta is very less so i should first see the radiation data then uh, i come to the decision that where i will i install okay, we are small customers so that's not a big but big power plants with done by the ntpc ramagundam or adani they have they will see this radiation data and go for the installation you don't find mass solar power plants in eastern part and northeastern part because after seeing this map no investor comes forward because return on investment only takes 10 to 15 years so this data is required when you deal with the solar any sub any application with the solar so this is actually challenge the this um, da this data is challenge because challenge in the sense you can see it is not totally same whole india doesn't have the same radiation it is varying so this is a big challenge actually so one example here i want to show you uh, suppose uh, in a bigger way i'm showing this if you consider a 50 kilowatt peak solar power plant a 50 for example so in that 50 i want to install as an investor i want to install a 50 kilowatt power plant anywhere in india so as a designer as a solar power plant designer you should inform the investor so where he should go for the 50 kilowatt power plant so for that this data is required you can see eastern part these are the zones of india eastern part northeastern part island means your andaman and nicobar islands and northern part western part southern part okay same 50 kilowatt observe properly same 50 kilowatt power plant we are installing in eastern part for example in calcutta same 50 kilowatt power plant is giving 77.696695 million units per year Okay. same 50 kilowatt power plant is giving 75 million units in northeastern part and in andaman it is giving 73 but very highest in northern part like in delhi or uttarakhand or where so if you install the 50 kilowatt finance is same if 1 kilowatt 40000 so 50 kilowatt is around so if you can calculate 50 kilowatt into uh, what i what did you say okay northern part here the highest radiation the highest radiation means the generation also very high in western part it, again it is better in southern part also is it. so in the investor if any application even if it is solar water when when we go to the south you know, by train from calcutta to we cross andhra we cross telangana and all these regions i see many solar water pumps are installed in the fields this side and that side so why they have and i don't find a single solar water pump in eastern part or in calcutta or in surrounding parts because you can see why the people doesn't want to install you can see that 50 kilowatt power plant is giving 92.6 million units here but the same 50 kilowatt is giving 77.6 million units in eastern part from so from this you can find that where the generation is very high investment cost is same investment cost is same you are investing the same money you are investing the same model same technology so but the generation is changing in different zones because of the radiation because of the temperature so temperature affects the solar modules radiation affects the solar if radiation increases radiation means in simple terms sunlight sun intensity if sun intensity increases your current increases but if your temperature rises below 25 degrees if you temperature above 25 degrees then your voltage falls so you have to see all these parameters climatic parameters before installing any solar application any solar application because if i say solar power plant or if i say solar water pump the module used in both cases is same okay. so for that reason if i install a solar water pump in northern part where the generation is very high so it gives return on investment more and your requirement is enough but if i install in eastern and northeastern part island part because this island part and the eastern part are in the uh, seaside area so in case of seaside area even if you check for chennai also it comes low because of the humidity 
humidity forms a water vapor uh, in the atmosphere and that obstructs the radiation so as the solar is totally nature dependent this fuel is totally nature dependent we should consider the climatic parameters while designing this is just an example to show you that we are investing the same amount we are investing the same kilowatt power plants even in what a same company but generation is changing according to the zones hope this is clear that's it today so yeah, i I'll, I'll, hope. yeah i will go through in detail of solar water pump designing uh, on tomorrow today yeah, i am yeah, giving yeah. introduction so that you have the idea of technology yeah yeah Th thank you thank you ma'am yeah. uh, for your uh, excellent uh, informative uh, speech with the help of powerpoint so participants i request all participants if you have any doubts related to uh, solar energy you can ask thank you there is no problem yeah don't hesitate ask anything about yeah. solar i'm ready to answer because i enjoy this subject you can ask yeah yeah, yeah. ma'am uh, as a physics student uh, i have a simple question yeah uh, how uh, that uh, uh, photon uh, energy photon mm -hmm. can convert in electrical format Uh, yeah how that phenomena and which type of material you are uh, using for manufacturing this uh, uh, roofs or material okay yeah. so uh, first question is that uh, how it generates the electric electron yeah how the role of a photon yeah. as a, as a physicist physicist yeah yeah i, I know the yeah i know the photon but yeah. uh, at which rate it uh, accelerate on that particular surface yeah so actually every cell is a pn junction like diode like diode it is a pn junction so you can see the down layer is p and top layer is n and then in the middle yellow yellowish color is your junction so every solar cell is a pn junction so process is same if i say crystalline silicon solar cell crystalline silicon solar cell means we use boron for p and phosphorus for n so material changes p material change n material okay, okay. so when the photon as photon is of course in like sunlight yeah, so when, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, when the photon falls on the solar yeah, yeah. cell the electrons which are resting in the p type electrons are until they get energy they re take rest in the p yeah okay okay i so got the answer uh, because that uh, material dependent okay yeah Yeah, if you, if uh, if you change from p to cadmium telluride and n to cadmium sulfide the technology changes we call it as cdt module the whole technology the function is same but the technology the material is changing the technology is changing that's it okay okay thank you ma'am okay. yeah any any other participants please uh, If you have any doubts, you can put in chat box or you can ask. Right now we are in the last phase. I yeah, we have to wait for participants. Okay. Uh, is 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 there any? Uh, I will check. Um, okay. Give me any question. Yeah. Yeah, I have some chats here. I'm just going. Through that, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, thank you. same time. Tomorrow. Yeah, same time. Oh, we have to continue. Uh, I request uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Sarge, uh, to uh, discuss, uh, say some few words about what of thanks for today's both sessions. Yeah, I will wait. Yeah, I will wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. I thank to Honorable Sri Apasar Patil, Prashubhushan, uh, Head College Development Committee, Vinayak Patil College, Vijayapur. Hello, Kawar sir. Hello. Honorable Sri 
सतीश चौहान सर मेंबर महाराष्ट्र रेजिस्ट्रेटिव काउंसिल थैंक यू सर आई थैंक टू ऑनरेबल श्री अप्पा साहेब पाटिल कृषिभूषण एंड हेड ऑफ कॉलेज डेवलपमेंट कमिटी विनायक राव पाटिल कॉलेज वाइजापुर आई ऑल्सो थैंक टू ऑनरेबल श्री सतीश चौहान मेंबर महाराष्ट्र महाराष्ट्र लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल एंड सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दिस महाराष्ट्र शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडल एंड ऑनरेबल श्री प्रकाश साउंके मेंबर महाराष्ट्र लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली प्रेसिडेंट महाराष्ट्र मराठवाड़ा शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडल औरंगाबाद आय स्पेशली थैंक्स टू आवर प्रिंसिपल रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर जिने सर वाइस प्रिंसिपल साउंके सर एंड परदेशी सर एंड आवर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एच ओडी रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर लोने सर एंड आय स्पेशली थैंक्स टू आवर टूडेज गेस्ट लेक्चर्स डॉक्टर संदीप चट्टोपाध्याय सर Uh, he give a valuable information about solar power in india uh, and uh, it's used in uh, irrigation purposes and uh, uh, lastly i uh, thank to uh, uh, madam uh, madhuchandrika chattopadhyay uh, project and training head uh, she gives a valuable information about this solar energy uh, thank you and uh, all the participant are requested to submit their feedback form to generate certificate thank you okay thank you all of you uh, all participants are request uh, they can uh, uh, share their uh, fill their uh, feedback uh, to got the certificate it is important and uh, have a great day thank you all of you once again yeah.